Hello. Um, thanks for joining uh, for this uh, case of test running in test rings talk today. My name is uh, Shua Khan. I am a Linux kernel fellow at the Linux Foundation. I want to talk through um, a quick overview on what we're going to cover today. I'm going to give a quick overview of uh, the case of test and goals and challenges we have with this case of test. I'll walk you through some use cases. I'm hoping to do some demos as well. Um, so that's, uh, I'll show you a few use cases um, to um, usage, uh, use cases and how it can be, individual tests can be run, how you can run all of the tests and so on. So I'll hope to do that. Um, and then we will also talk about what does it take uh, to, to, to supporting fully case of test running in test strings. And then I will also talk about briefly kernel CI use cases, related use cases, which are applicable to generally all the test strings. But you're kind of focusing on kernel CI, getting case of tests running in kernel CI, C, CI well um, so that we can continue to test, uh, run case of tests to do regression tests on all of our trees as we are doing integration and in our development. And then that's kind of the agenda for today. Let me jump right into it. Case of test is a developer test suite. Um, it is written by kernel developers. Um, kernel developers and kernel users can both use this test suite. So it, what does it contain? It is a collection of a black box, uh, test white and black box tests, um, user space with uh, some kernel assist in, to, in terms of modules to test the kernel side of the code um, from the user space. And then it's a functional and a feature test as well. You will see, um, for example, um, huge um, pages, tests related to test to test, huge page features, and then uh, some of the um, virtual memory features that go in, and then timers, the different various kinds of timer tests, and so on. So we also have a mix of hardware and driver tests. We have a few uh, GPU tests, and then uh, drivers, uh, some uh, driver tests. This is where we can, there are some challenges to adding tests uh, for hardware. So we, it's, it's a work in progress. We keep adding tests, but drivers is continuing to grow. We also have a, a, a small percentage of uh, stress and performance tests. Uh, examples are um, CPU hot plug, for example, and memory and CPU hot plug. And what happens when we were to uh, add and remove um, a large number of CPUs and remove memory modules, memory. Um, so we have a few stress related tests, but it is by no means it doesn't have too many uh, performance and stress tests. So what does the, where does the git uh, kernel self test git, git, I gave a link here. Let me quickly show you, uh, share a screen to show you the, what it looks like. Chrome tab, let me, sorry, I'm playing with the, Sharing, okay, so this is uh, what it looks like. And you have um, KUnit fix uh, also funnels through this uh, um, uh, repo. So you will see KUnit fixes, for example, KUnit next and next and fixes. This is what the uh, uh, self-test kit looks like. And then there is a patchwork project, project as well. So patches are maintained there. I'll quick, quick, quickly show you what that looks like. And so you'll see patchwork. It's all um, you can go look at the patches that come in come in through the patchwork. And let's see next. Um, and so testing focus is what is the focus for this testing? Features, functionality, regressions, and then we want to cover uh, subsystems. So we do have large number of subsystems. Every new release, we have several new tests and test cases. Uh, getting added every 
release, we see um, the number of subsystem coverage grow, going up continuously. Not just the subsystem coverage, um, it's also individual test cases for uh, existing subsystems. So you see constant growth in this area. And let's talk, talk a little bit about what it's not for. It's not for testing workloads or an application-focused testing. When I say that, um, it, that's just not the focus. Like, for example, you were you're wanting to test a, a, a specific workload, um, then that's, this KSL test is not suitable for that. And who are the authors? Who writes these tests? Kernel developers and uh, kernel users as well. Uh, we have a large number of um, um, uh, test writers. As they use the test, they send in improvements, and then they send um, fixes when the tests don't work very well. So who are the users? Again, we are kernel developers use kernel self-tests heavily during their workflow. And kernel users, of course, use them uh, to test the kernel and test their specific subsystems, uh, uh, specific systems that they are interested in. Patch flow. So this is uh, uh, kernel self-test patch flow is uh, a mix. Um, we have uh, the reason um, the, the patches funnel go through um, the kernel self-test kit, which I man maintain, and then patches also go through MM git and then x86 git. I'm not listing all of them. Um, the various uh, trees, maintainers send tests up to um, to Linux's uh, mainline uh, networking. Also, another um, the reason for that this patch flow model is because we want to make it easy to write tests and make those tests available for users and developers to run. Um, if a feature networking feature, a new test depends on a networking feature that is in networking Git, it doesn't make any sense to hold the test up um, uh, to send it through the next kernel self-test Git. So same same goes for um, MM, same goes for x86. So our the idea is make it easy for, te and tests and features go together, make it easy for, for uh, enable, uh, make it easy to test, find the tests, and that's that's the goal, really, to make it easy to test. Um, it doesn't matter which uh, tree the test actually goes through. So I'll give you a quick overview on what tests look like. At this point, I'll take you to sharing my terminal, and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like. Let's take a look. Um, share. All right, so um, here you will see I am, I have a, uh, this is a um, 5.3 latest, uh, 5.8 latest. I'm at uh, 5.8 RC3. So let's take a look and see. I wanted to show you, this is the main self-test directory that we are in, tools testing self-tests. You will see a lots of directories with the tests, you'll see um, all each of the, like, for example, you have um, um, KCMP, for example. That is a one test that tests a certain KCMP feature. And then you have um, a test for uh, VM test right here. This VM uh, test has multiple tests underneath. So I'll quickly show you, go into um, an example of breakpoints test, for example. When I talk about this is uh, this is a test, a high level test that gets run. And when you run this test, you will see multiple um, test cases being run. Um, let me quickly run this test for you. So let me run it from uh, the main. I want to show you the use case of being able to run this from the main directory. How can you, case of test can be run as an individual test or all tests together, right now we are just going to run one single test. So I will run targets variable, lets you select which test you want to run. Like for example, I will quickly run size test. 
So it will also install the required necessary headers because the idea is k self tests are designed to test the headers and the kernel together. So it will build all the tests. Uh, first install the headers. Go ahead and install the headers and then run the test. And you will see it built this size test and it ran the test. And then it it'll sh um, that's the output of the test. And you will see this tap version 13. Uh, 13. That is a test anything protocol um, reporting output. Results are reported in this format. So you will see when OK uh, one indicates here that this test is success successful, you rerun. And then you'll have, uh, if a test is skipped, you will see test skipped. So that's the idea of that. Then this output can be used by parsers um, that are test th that can parse the TAP version 13 um, uh, compliant output. And, and then parsing becomes easier to uh, keep checking your results are the same. You, you want to make sure that each time you run the test, you're seeing consistent results, right? So it becomes easier to test consistency of those results. And then I'm going to run one more here um, to show you the test cases. And I'm talking about test cases. You will see um, I'm running a breakpoints test here. It will um, build it and run a lot of different tests. So this particular test, when I talk about test cases, this is what I'm talking about. This test, breakpoint test, consists of two tests. One is um, step after suspend test, which I don't run because it'll, I don't, uh, this is a more of an invasive test. I'm not running that. So that's why it, it needs to be run as root. It tells you that it cannot run the test. And then it says, I am uh, skipping this test and because you need to be root. And then you have about 110 test cases in this, individual test cases in this particular test. So you will see that all of the tests are run. So it'll print output saying you have um, so many errors and failures. There is two failures in this particular case. And you can keep checking this test, um, running the test and figure out which ones fail and which ones pass. Let's go back to the presentation. So now you can see how the break, if you map the breakpoint test here, um, you will see that the main test breakpoints here. And then there is a two tub subtests that we had. We looked at suspend test and the regular breakpoint test. And then breakpoint test has about 110 um, individual test cases. So we are constantly um, compare, adding uh, to the individual test cases here. And then as well as adding to the, uh, we are increasing targets. So we'll keep increasing targets and we keep adding subtests and then individual test cases. So we are working on all of these four different areas. Let's go to the next one. What are the goals and challenges for this? Uh, as uh, the kernel self test keeps growing, what are the challenges? It is, um, we have reasonably uh, good uh, framework right now to be able to um, add uh, tests and customize uh, building, running, and so on. Uh, that's the focus. We are we keep evolving the common fra framework. The frame common framework includes reporting, building, running, install, and all of those fall into the framework. And then we uh, keep increasing coverage in terms of new configurations, new features, and the drivers fitting into, into the targets model e for each subsystem. We keep adding those. If you go back looking at the previous slide I showed you, so we are, we are constantly adding, working on adding these. So it's a continuous process. Um, uh, we do add a regression tests for fixed bugs. And when um, some of the drivers I maintain, if I find problems, I go add tests. Uh, when I am fixing bugs, I want to make sure they don't resurface. And they also testing for various conditions. So all of the kernel, uh, a lot of the kernel developers keep doing that. So we have also, you, you have seen uh, quickly that it, it shows for pass, fail, and skip. This reporting is part of the common frame framework. We keep looking for where areas where tests do report if they cannot run, they report skip, 
that they are skipping the test um, instead of failing because it results in even skipped tests are reported as fail, that would be false false reporting of failures. So we, we continuously monitor looking for um, any bugs in test areas where they are not correctly reporting uh, pass, fail, and skip reports. And reporting also, I simply taught, I showed you what uh, test anything protocol uh, output looks like, that it, it, we are compliant. We keep making changes as the test anything protocol um, makes uh, uh, keeps advancing, and recently we are actually working on a uh, RFC um, uh, patch set right now that uh, we are uh, we found there are it's not totally compliant. We are fixing those, so we keep making changes there as to keep up with the test anything protocol, and also balancing K self test runtime and coverage. Originally, I hoped that um, we could run all these tests. Um, uh, in a certain amount of time. Um, however, um, that is not the goal at the moment because we want to be able to run. We The subsystem has grown quite a bit. We have a large number of tests. And holding it to a certain time um, uh, is no longer advantageous. So we, I am looking at, um, you can still select uh, if you want to time it, you want to keep the time you, you can pick and choose the number of tests you ta uh, uh, using the targets variable, you can run only the tests you want to run. So you, um, so that way, uh, time, the total time, balancing total time and coverage. I am leaning towards coverage now, as opposed to saying, hey, we, do, we want to hold to a certain time. So um, what are the other challenges? Um, it is heavily used by kernel developers. The primary goal of this uh, test suite is it, it is a developer test suite, and we continue to 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 maintain that spirit because we want to be able to use it during our kernel workflow uh, to be able to use it when we add new features. We want to make sure that our other uh, features don't regress previous uh, behavior. Um, no regressions, no new bugs introduced. So we we want. I the goal is has always been developer focused, and it will continue to be develop, developer focused. And additional goal is to being able to support in test strings because it it is um, it is important to do so. Uh, the challenge here is a framework that has evolved and well suited for manual testing, um, meaning a developer going in being able to test their subsystem specific just run their subsystem specific tests um, to support extending it to support auto test environments that has been a ch continuous challenge since its beginning so what are um, it supports uh, native and cross builds because um, you need if you want to um, uh, build a uh, kernel self test to run on a ARM64 system, for example, on a you can do that on an x86 system and then take those tests. And then other use cases include um, individual tests. You can run. Uh, I showed you uh, being able to run individual tests just now, running size and breakpoints tests. You can pick and choose the sets, the tests you want to run, and you can also run a subset of tests um, as well. And then you can um, do relocation. That feature, that uh, support is evolving in some sense. Um, uh, currently, does not support um, relative paths, but you know it's a work in progress. So let's see. Um, I do want to show you a few more runs of this, but I'm going to to uh, go through a few more slides before I switch to a demo mode. So, okay, self-test use cases. Running tests, you have, uh, so the previous slide, this is like building use cases. You can just build them um, and then um, and then uh, run them later, right? So, and then you have, uh, the way I showed you the k-self-test command from the top level, make, make file, um, by running make k-self-test, it'll build, run all the tests. That's what it does. And I have shown you examples of running individual tests. And then also installing. Um, if you are building a 
kernel self just to run on a different target, you, you have to do install. The reason for that is um, all of these tests, they um, have shell scripts attached to them in some of them. Some tests are driven by um, the executables get called from the um, shell scripts. And then also a lot of the um, running part of it, like for example, if you have a dependence on a module and you want to load the module before you run it, there is all of that um, is it, it, it generates a run script at the install time using make make it, it generates the run script and then you will need that run, run script to be able to run it on a target. So I'll show you an example of um, run script in just a bit. So this is a good time for me to show um, a bit of a, a demo on what I am talking about in terms of install. So let me go share again. So let's quickly do, I'm going to do a, a K self test install of one test and show you what, um, what I mean by run script. Oh, OK. If I spelled it right, it would work. So what you're seeing is it is going to install the headers in the target. So that's kind of what you're seeing. So once that is done, we can go and take a look what it installed. So it, it, it generates it generates a case of test directory, so you can easily rsync it. And you will see this size directory is where it puts all the uh, objects it builds, executables. So you'll see get size over there, and then um, install is the one that you can just take and copy and you will see the run script that I was talking about and this run script will um, run it and then uh, echo uh, when it provides all of the environment you need to run this like for example if you were to run this run script so this uh, output should be familiar to you we ran it from the uh, my git repo a little while ago and then the same test you are running it as an installed test so let me stop sharing here. And then no. Uh, uh, so OK, so that's that uh, talks about a um, little bit of uh, um, how to run these tests. And then what is the current status of uh, um, K self tests and test rings? That's really the focus, some of the focus of this uh, conversation today. Kernel self-test is run in uh, Linux kernel LK, uh, LKFT testing. So uh, let's go look at that. Um, I want to show you. Um, OK, I'm sorry. I'm going to sh uh, share that screen. Um, Chrome tab, let's see. Let's go looking at LKFT. So this is the um, Linux kernel functional testing uh, ring. Um, Linaro uh, runs a lots of uh, tests, kernel self-tests on various rings. They test not just kernel self-tests, they run other tests as well. 
um, but but you know this is this is what the their dashboard looks like in terms of currently they are uh, testing they show the table, stable RC 5.7 being run and then they also have mainline tests they also test the Linux mainline right here you will see the Linux mainline test right there so um, let's we'll go back to my presentation here and um, and then they run tests on Linux Next, uh, various trees on Linux Next, and then also Linux Mainline, Stable, and they will cover all of these active kernel releases. So let me share that again with you quickly um, to get an idea on what they, what are the active kernel releases. Currently, the kernel active releases are uh, here, 5.7. Is needs to be added to to this as well. Five point seven. I I don't think I don't, I don't think is supported uh, quite. But but you can see all of the releases that get supported. Five point four, four point nineteen, four point fourteen, four point nine, four point four. So this LKFT ring runs kernel tests, self tests in all of those. So let's go take a look at another one. So a case self test also gets run in. Zero day service. So they the the way they run is they run mainline on several trees and kernel configs. They call for their coverage. Kernel CI test rings. This is where we're working on. Uh, we are um, working on adding more and more tests uh, to be able to run them. The focus has been that okay, it's running on LKFT. We are covering there, but we also want to run it in kernel CI. So that's kind of what we are working on at the moment. And um, I have been working on fixing some of the framework to be able to have a kernel, uh, self, kernel, all of the kernel self-tests built in a, um, in a cross-build environment, and then uh, any bugs we might have. Most of the things that sometimes it show up is because we are, the framework is flexible, it allows tests to be able to build and run they can customize, um, for example, BPF requires Clang to be built. So customization is possible. Um, because of that, once in a while, we find that when we make new changes to the tests, it sometimes uh, will have to look at the framework. Does it, the use cases, there are two separate use cases. Use cases for uh, developers use cases that get tested more often than um, ring use cases. So we have to make sure that all of these use cases don't break. So that has been somewhat a challenge and it's a work in progress. We are continuously making sure all of the uh, use cases are work and they continue to work. And so dependency checks. There is another requirement that in, in you know, kernel CI, you might have a system that doesn't support all of the configurations. You might have to tune the configurations the way you, ne you need. And then when you're building it on a uh, development system, you want to make sure kernel self-tests can build. What tests don't build? A uh, couple of things. You need some tests require dependencies, packages in in installed. Um, so when you when a test depends on um, external packages, meaning now it it tests the it uses the kernel headers and everything, but you might need a few libraries loaded. So kernel dependent uh, kernel test dependency dot sh you can run that uh, to figure out if your development system can build all the kernel um, self tests or not. So you might be have missing packages. You can do that. You can run that and figure out. And you also print targets that can be built. It'll give you a list of targets. So you can pass it to the targets variable I just talked about. You can write a wrapper script um, using this kernel test dependency, you can do two things. One is figure out what you you want, you need to install on your de development system to be able to build, cross build, and then also uh, get a list of tests that uh, can be built. Uh, let me go to the next one. Um, so the more use cases, being able to build, um, cross build uh, as uh, tests, and then one of the other things that we are working on is to be able to, if a particular uh, hardware on kernel self-test, kernel CI ring wants to be able certain 
configurations enabled, then we should be able to pick and choose. So automating, it can be done manually right now, but automating that is what is um, ne what needs to happen for kernel uh, case help test to run um, seamlessly on kernel CI without uh, fully automating and as much automation as needed without um, manual intervention. Okay, make case self test merge. We'll, um, I'll quickly show you uh, this particular part a little bit, what the configuration files look like, and then what can you do with case self test merge. When you run case self test merge, it'll uh, take all the config individual test configuration dependencies, and it'll generate a kernel configuration for you that you can build the kernel with, so to get the coverage for the tests. Let's take a quick look at what, um, Okay, I think I lost my window. Sorry about that, I lost my window that I was demoing, you, demoing things for you. But okay, I'm back there. So let me share that with you. And then you will see, you will see uh, config files. So you can see a, uh, several config files under each of the tests. So let's take example of maybe, well, let's go ahead and try what's underneath. So it'll show you that it, this particular test requires all of these kernel configuration options enabled for it to run. It has its dependencies. So if you were to do kernel case of that merge, what it does is it takes all of these config files here. It'll generate a kernel configuration file for you to build the kernel with. Uh, let's look at what ZRAM. I mean, it's easy to guess. I guess it needs ZRAM and Z, ZS malloc. Um, it'll enable that in the uh, configuration file. So if you can just do k self test merge, I won't run this, but yeah, um, it'll take a bit of time to run. If you were to run this, what it does is it takes all of these config uh, options and enables them in your dot config. So it'll it'll generate a config for you that has the kernel, and then you can build the kernel with all of those options enabled. Mm. Let's get back to, stop sharing here. I'm getting back to um, the presentation. And let's look at, so what is tricky? This, this configura configuration is work in progress. It can be done. The tricky part is um, being able to enable specific features. For example, you have a VM test say that tests a multiple options to a system call. That would be something uh, being able to select that though specific uh, test cases can be difficult. It can be done, but you know it's, that's uh, a level of complexity. We these are the kinds of use these are the use cases that we are focusing on. To begin with, being able to build and install and being able to select the specific configurations that we want to test, tailor the configuration, test configuration to the system that is being tested. So I, we ta I talked through these a little bit. K-self-test um, all will build all the tests for you. Make K-self-test will run them as well um, if you are natively building it. Make a self test install will install the targets. We I showed you what that install looks like with the size test as an example. Um, and then you can kernel for kernel self test uh, uh, kernel CI workflow. Um, you have to you have to first build. You're you're doing a relocatable build because you're building in a different directory. You want to be able to. Um, uh, maybe you are using a development system to build uh, ARM64 tests to, uh, for uh, the case of tests for an ARM system, or maybe you are building it for a PowerPC, or you could be building it for um, Spark, for example. You could be building it for any system. So you cross-build. You cross-build that. You build a kernel first and make sure you 
then after that you go ahead and build your tests because we have seen the link between kernel configuration and kernel self tests with the configuration files we have available you need to tailor that you you have to match those so a little bit about rev matching um i ta i uh, didn't talk about that earlier when i was talking about um rev matching kernel and kernel self tests in general uh, you want to, in some cases, in, in, a, in a stable, older stable releases, you want to um, rev match the kernel. That's desired desired outcome. And in some cases, for coverage, if you if you want to be to run 5.8 mainline kernel self tests on 5.7, it, which is okay, um, it, it, they all run. They uh, how you have to choose between. Um, rev matching versus um, coverage, right? In some cases, it's necessary to rev match because, especially BPF tests, you want to rev match that. You don't want to, um, uh, to take a um, kernel self test from a uh, newer release into an older kernel. So we talked about this is how this is how you can install the uh, test and. Going forward, next steps. Like uh, next steps, I kind of I talked about next steps already in it to to some extent, talking about how we can evolving this manual uh, framework that well a framework that's well suited for manual uh, run testing running tests into a automated environment where you are able to tailor your configurations to the system, target system you are testing, and then also being able to uh, select the specific features. So that's that's work in progress, and I'm working with kernel CI um, admins. And Kevin and I have been collaborating, trying to get this all working so we can run it in kernel CI on a consistent basis. All of the, um, uh, all when, they pick up a new release to test, um, they will be able to run kernel self-tests as well. So with that, I want to spend some time answering questions. If, uh, if you have any. And let's see, I'm seeing some uh, questions here. How does K-self-test compare with P-test? Um, I have to, I do not, uh, so, okay, so I will answer from a different perspective. Kernel self-test is part of the kernel, re kernel repository. So this falls into a different category of tests. We have LTP tests, we have other, several other tests outside the kernel repository. They are all very valuable tests. So the difference between kernel self-test and other tests is, we are able to evolve kernel self-tests self as we are writing features. So we are able to, uh, to develop tests as we write kernel code at the same time. Very often, kernel self-tests and kernel features go together. So that is the advantage we find as kernel developers that we are able to test them without um, these two efforts being separate, they become a joint effort that they, they go together. So I do not know if that answers your question. That's that one difference that I see from outside tests. I'm not, I don't specifically know about p-test, but so that's the answer to that question. And let me see a second question. Do these kernel test systems use sysbot reproducers of kernel crashes, no. So the reason for that is uh, Dimitri and I went back and forth on how we can, uh, if we want to bring uh, sysbot um, uh, reproducers into the kernel self-test. General recommendation is reproducers aren't, um, they're auto-generated very often. They don't have the same level of code quality. Um, I mean, it, it, it's auto-generated code. It might not meet the coding guidelines of kernel um, also, and then it takes a lot of work to turn them into, um, to add them to the existing kernel um, self-test suite. Because the kernel self-test suite has to worry about um, test anything protocol, for example, 
or uh, being able to build, cross build and so on. So we have chosen to keep that separately. And that um, I maintain a Linux uh, alt skit. Um, uh, let me show you. So I talked about that in the previous one. There is a Linux alt skit that I maintain on kernel.org. Um, uh, uh, so I periodically pull from Dimitri's um, SysBot reproducers. So they are all preserved. We don't want to lose them. So we, and it's being used, there is a run script that runs it. And then LTP is, um, started using this as well. Uh, pull it from the Linux Alt Git and then, by the way, Linux Alt stands for auto-generated test suite. So, um, so we are preserving it, it's there, but we are not planning to make it part of the kernel um, self-test for reasons of, we evaluated it and we decided we want to keep it separate. Um, Will kernel self-test work, work with any kernel version? Yes. The goal is you should be able to, uh, for the most part, take the kernel self-test from the main line and be able to run on the stable kernels. So there is, a, I say that um, I, I ask people to use their judgment because on one hand, we are con continuously adding new tests in some cases uh, to cover existing features. Those existing features might be present in the stable kernels, and then you might get a better coverage. However, you will also have a lot of noise with that because stable kernels only take fixes and new features and new configurations don't go in there. So you will have to balance that coverage versus noise. So I leave it up to individual users as making a call on that because um, you will have a larger, depending on the release, you might have more new tests, newer tests that won't be able to test the, um, won't be effective on a stable release because you do not have those features present or configurations present on the on those kernels. Let me see, I have one more question here. Is it worth slash recommend kernel self-test self when writing custom device drivers? Okay, so driver coverage is, um, um, let me, let me think about that a little bit. Um, so if you are looking for, if you are looking for being able to test a custom device driver, um, with the case of test, obviously that's not possible, right? Unless you write a test specific to your device driver. We have a few device driver tests in the kernel, uh, we are increasing them. We do not have as many. However, you could, if there are um, areas of the kernel your device driver depends on um, a feature. Just just one feature that comes to my mind right now is, say, Android Ion um, uh, memory. So if you say your driver depends on that, you could run the Android, uh, that particular uh, test that tests a specific um, features, kernel features that your device driver might depend on. So DMA, he, you know, any of the DMA stuff, sync um, uh, is another one, DRM sync protocol. So there are some sync tests in the, the kernel self-test. If your driver depends on that, so I would say, hey, include that in your uh, testing. So you have to kind of take a look at what uh, features make sense for your um, kernel features that you want to make sure um, they don't API and kernel features don't regress for your, that you are interested in for your specific driver. Other than that, if you are writing a custom device driver and you want to be able to test your driver, then you have to, to write a test for that. So looks like I have a bit of time. Let me see, I can show you the Linux alts git here. Okay, so I will show you where I'm collecting um, 
the Linux alts, uh, all of the rep uh, Sysbot reproducers. You should be able to, I maintain this, I pull this, um, I just, uh, seven weeks ago, I think I did a recent pull, and then I uh, I pull them from uh, Dimitri's um, Syscaller repo, and then bring those tests in, and then commit them. I don't make any changes other than just no changes necessary usually. I will add a uh, commit log, and then I'll uh, pull, I actually pull all his commits, and then um, just with the, uh, and just apply them. So you can find all of the uh, Sysbot reproducers here for you to run. So that is that, that you will, I keep periodically pulling them. And then let me see any other questions. Um, uh, so maybe p-test is more appropriate to test a custom driver? Potentially, I do not know p-test. I need to understand it before I can answer the question. But yes, um, there are, uh, we do have various ways to test the drivers, um, meaning uh, if you have driver specific tests you want, you need to run tests on, um, then then you p-test probably is more appropriate for that. But, um, but we are adding more driver tests. The problem with driver tests always is that um, you have, you want to make sure, um, being able to run in, um, in all environments, right? Like, for example, you're doing auto testing, the kind of coverage you would get for your uh, driver, um, is depends on whether that hardware uh, is available on the kernel rigs or not. We have about three more minutes left. Um, I also have an AMA session tomorrow in the afternoon. Um, I am um, going, If feel free to stop by and ask any questions you might have, uh, more questions you may have, or feel free to send me email. Um, you can reach me on Cardinal IRC channels as well, Newbies channel. So let's see what else is left. I guess there are no questions, I guess. Thanks for attending, definitely. And then uh, look me up for the tomorrow session. And I did a talk on um, uh, security-minded development right before this. And I'm going to address both. Um, if you have any questions about kernel self-tests um, any in kernel CI efforts, what we are doing, um, attend the plan to attend the session. Okay, thank you for um, attending, everybody. Um, I'll hope to see you at the AMA session tomorrow. Thanks.